Daniel, to have you all uh, on board. let's begin with you, Dan, because you you uh, tweeted something this weekend that uh, many others did, and your tweet uh, caught me off guard, uh, as did the tweet from from many others uh, who said that George H. W. Bush was the best president of their lifetime, and your your tweet said this. Rest in peace to George H.W. Bush, the greatest president of my lifetime. Yeah, I said it. Um, what made you say that, and what made lifelong Democrats like uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski uh, vote for one Republican in their lifetime, and that Republican uh, was George H.W. Bush? Hmm. Well, I think there's a couple of reasons. I mean, the most obvious is that you can argue that George H.W. Bush was the greatest foreign policy president we've had potentially in the, the post-war era, at least since uh, Eisenhower. Um, as you showed in the, the, the tape segment you had, it was far from guaranteed that the Cold War was going to end as peacefully as it did. Um, it was far from guaranteed that Saddam Hussein would be repulsed from Kuwait when he uh, intervened there. And there are about a hundred other smaller areas ranging from trade policy to the Korean Peninsula to the um, uh, greater Middle East where the Bush administration took steps that successive administrations were potentially able to build on um, to achieve concrete victories. And I think actually the, the most telling thing about Bush as a, as a leader um, was the degree to which people in his administration did extremely well that when they then served under his son uh, developed reputations that were somewhat uh, less savory. Think about Dick Cheney um, as Secretary of Defense or Colin Powell for that matter as the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under Bush. Um, and I also think that his domestic contributions have been somewhat underrated uh, in no small part because he obviously only served one term. But you can argue that the 1990 compromise with Democrats um, on the budget was one of the most important steps towards fiscal rectitude by the end of the 1990s. Um, and unfortunately, he paid the political price for that. But that didn't mean it wasn't a good policy deal. Um, and then finally, just the, the sort of graciousness which, which Bush demonstrated always in his, in his uh, personal life. Um, and I think that was sort of exemplified by the op-ed that Bill Clinton wrote in the Washington Post talking about the, the letter uh, that, that Bush left for him on inauguration day in 1993, which frankly you should just photocopy and, and should be given to every you know, future president as sort of the template uh, for what you're going to have to learn when you take that office. John Meacham, uh, we were fortunate enough as a nation to be bookended uh, in the Cold War with two one-term presidents who left office uh, uh, with uh, clouds over their heads but ended up being reassessed, Harry Truman, it took about 20 years being reassessed as a near great or great president for what he did from 1947 to 1952. Um, of course, he became president in 45, but his great challenges with the Soviet Union started in earnest in 47. And now here we have George H.W. Bush, another one-term president who helped end uh, the Cold War, land that plane, as Barack Obama said. And I just, I want to quote David Rothkopf, another, uh, another foreign policy expert who is not known to always say kind things about Republicans. And David said, as a historian of the White House, and in particular of national security and foreign policy making in the White House, it very early on became apparent to me that in those areas, the George H.W. Bush White House <clears throat> set the high water mark among all those of the post-World War II era. Extraordinary words uh, from, again, so many, so many people uh, who were not partisan Republicans. Henry Kissinger once told me when I, was, when I was doing the book about President Bush that he thought George H.W. Bush had the most momentous foreign policy presidency since Truman which is a remarkable thing for Kissinger to say since Kissinger wasn't really involved. So you know right. it must be true. Right. Exactly. Uh, that's, you know, that, anyway, uh, anyway. As, as Henry used to say, uh, it has the virtue of being true. Uh, I think that's a great point. Uh, Truman pops up to uh, in President Bush's diary. He was remar He was stunned by the level of popularity that uh, unfolded in the uh, spring of 1991. He said, you know, is 89, 91 percent, and Bush said, there's nothing like it since Truman. But here's the realist in him. He knew it was soft support. He foresaw economic problems ahead. Uh, he knew that Americans moved on very quickly, that they didn't vote about the past, they voted about the future. 
He was a much more astute politician than he gets uh, credit for for being. Mm -hmm. uh, the the other great thing is everybody says how he was a terrible you know terrible campaigner. From the very beginning, uh, it drove him crazy to be told that. Uh, there's a wonderful story about when he was running for the Senate in Texas the second time in 1970. He goes into a fundraiser and gives a talk, and it's not wildly successful. And he's coming out, and his, his, the campaign volunteer who's with him says, you know, you really need to work on these speeches. And Bush said, you know, you're driving me. Uh, so there, there, there was there was a competitive streak in him too. Uh, I, I think the uh, I think the foreign policy legacy. It's been striking to me that that's what people have focused on. It, it didn't surprise me, but the steady hand. That that's what he offered. I also think, and I think Joe, you'd agree with this, that we were incredibly fortunate as a country to have the twelve years of Ronald Reagan and George Bush at that particular moment, because Reagan could mm. do things that George Bush couldn't do, and George Bush could do things that Reagan couldn't do. And in the old line attributed to Bismarck, for some reason God loves drunks, little children in the United States of America, and He loved us from 1981 to 1993 in these momentous times. Well, you know, and, and Mika, I, I read something from Christopher Buckley, who who worked with George H. W. Bush, <clears throat> that actually talks about, and we're going to get to Peggy in one moment to talk about this, but the incredible grace that both of these men had. We've heard about George H. W. Bush's grace, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Christopher Buckley uh, recounted a story that Bush had told him about Ronald Reagan, where he went in after Reagan was shot in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in the hospital, <clears throat> went in and the room was empty. The president wasn't there. And he actually saw the president on his hands and knees, uh, President Reagan, after being shot, wiping up water from the floor. <laughs> and he ran and he said, Mr. President, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he said, I was trying to get a drink of water. I spilled it on the floor. And I don't want some nurse to have to come in here and clean up after me because I made the mess. I need to clean it up. And you, you just see that that servant leadership that we read about, that Meacham could tell you, that you read about in the Bible. Jesus talks about servant leadership. And whether it was Ronald Reagan or George H.W. Bush, we saw a picture there of Jimmy Carter. Uh, that's what made George H.W. Bush so great. He understood he was serving the people, uh, not vice versa. And, and Peggy Noonan, I'd let you, uh, rather let you expound upon this because that generosity of spirit and um, that goodness, I think, revolved around love of country and, and spirit and patriotism. Yeah, you know, the uh, uh, writer in Washington, uh, Rich Galen, noted in a newsletter last night, he's, he was thinking about George H.W. Bush and he said, you know what's remarkable? After the fall of the Soviet Union, during the great efforts to reunify Germany, George H.W. Bush gave a State of the Union address in 1992 and he said these words, by the grace of God, America won the Cold War. He didn't say, my administration won the Cold War. He didn't say, uh, Republican thought and philosophy won the Cold War. He said, the American people won the Cold War. It was an example, I think, of old style and old school approaches about who does the work here and who deserves the credit. It was a serious nod to the American people who for more than 50 years had had uh, put forward the blood and treasure to make this thing be handleable and make the Soviets finally go down. And it was such, if you go back and read it as I did last night, it was such a departure from the sort of presidential narcissism that we see now and have seen in fairness for a long time. In the past 25 mm -hmm. years, we've lost that kind of presidential modesty in which they say, there has been a great gain and you did it. Mm. Yeah, and Peggy, um, you were there at the revolution. Uh, you were also there when Ronald Reagan left on January the 20th, 1989. I just want for, for people too young to remember that time and hearing the accolades that George W. Bush is, is receiving now. Uh, George H.W. Bush is one of the great presidents of the post-war era. Uh, 
Can you just explain how difficult it was for George H.W. Bush to escape Ronald Reagan's shadow? We remember the Newsweek cover talking about yeah. the wimp factor. We remember people saying George H.W. Bush reminds every woman of her, her, her first, first husband. husband. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the insults became so bad that somebody had to actually write uh, an op-ed that I still remember, my God, what, 40 years, 30 years later, called uh, the George Bush that I know, telling the story of how Bush alone with a West Texas contributor who made a racial slur when nobody else was watching and he desperately needed the man's money to win the 1970 Senate campaign, immediately got up and he said, this meeting's over, walked out and drove, uh, drove back home. Uh, or, of course, what he did in the war, that this was no wimp, this was a strong man. But that shadow of Reagan yeah. hung over him, not only in 1989, but really for many throughout his entire presidency. Yeah, that's so true. Um, I think it was a bit of a harassment to him. And he had this funny chafing feeling where personally he liked Reagan so much. He and Reagan had worked together for eight years and seen each other at very regular lunches and, and worked out a really nice relationship that became a friendship. Moreover, Ronald Reagan had picked uh, George H.W. Bush from it would be overstating it to say relative obscurity, but Reagan didn't have to pick George H.W. Bush to be his vice president in 1980. So Bush was so grateful to Reagan. At the same time, Reagan was a, in his time, a giant figure. He was the leader of an ideological movement that was on the ascendancy. He was charismatic. He was the guy you looked at. He was the guy who changed the Republican Party between 1979 and the day Bush walked in as president from a moderate, liberal, moderate party to a fully acknowledged, fully confessed conservative party. On top of that, Reagan's way, part of Reagan's way of governing had to do with going forward and speaking what he thought were clear, blunt truths that needed diplomatically to be said and making a great impression in that way. So that was hard for Bush. Bush loved him and at the same time couldn't help but feel, hey, I'm pretty good too. <laughs> you know, you're getting sort of getting all the attention or you're getting all the admiration. It was hard for him. Also, another thing that was hard, Reagan, by the end of his White House, of his two administrations, was beloved by the Republican base and really liked by most of the American people for various reasons, from personal ones like how he reacted when he was shot to how things turned out diplomatically and economically. So they really liked him. Bush didn't walk into the presidency with that great whoosh of love and affection behind him. He had to, to earn it in his way. And, and I know he, he felt he was operating sometimes under a disadvantage. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.